Welcome everybody to another edition of WCW 2003 as we're heading towards Starcade 2003 here in TW 2020. And yes, it's finally the go-home show for Starcade as we're live from the iWireless Center in Moline, Illinois with 12,000 people. And yeah, this is the last show before Starcade. And just as a programming note, um, you know, today will be Starcade, then on Friday will be the w will be the Starcade basically preview, and then next Friday will be actual Starcade. I'll figure out ne something for next Monday or, you know. But, but regardless, yeah, it's basically like lots of hype, lots of build for that final, uh, for that final big show of 2003. We start with our pre-show match as Evan Courageous, Jamie Noble, and Sean Stasiak defeat Dustin Rhodes, Fifth and Lee and LaParka in 1502, and Stasiak pin LaParka with the Fisherman Buster. This gets a 57, LaParka gets a 38, Finley gets a 45, Rhodes gets a 68, Stasiak gets a 59, Noble gets a 71, and Courageous gets a 43. And yeah, that also means if I emailed you about, uh, the, the Starcade praise, you know, the band price, please get back to me. I'll send a follow-up email to a couple people. Um, basically, like, if you don't get back to me about uh, your prizes by the time Starcade is over, I'll basically uh, give people a little bit longer, but then after that, I'll probably just contact somebody else who did, did the, did, did the uh, competition. But regardless, off to the actual show. We start out with if something gets a 93, Jesus, um, as basically we start with the, you know, whole... You know, whole Deadpool coming out to the ring together, getting lots of booze from 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 the audience, of course. As you know, basically, you know, Morningstar starts and says, you know, the clock is ticking towards the inevitable end of our message, and our message will be shown to all that we deserve to be at the top here in World Championship Wrestling, and we are the end and beginning. And others may have the titles for their own, but we return to our proper place, whether anyone likes it or not, because this is we've created destruction and death in this company and we'll continue to do so. Whether it's my monster Macias, the most devastating force in the world championship wrestling, Vampiro, or even less that. Starcade, you know, will and you know basically when we're taking mixed mic and you know Starcade will be the undoing of myth, whether it's the myth of the unstoppable Goldberg or the myth of R V D and Booker's friendship, and whether they will not turn on each other one way or the other for victory over me. But even if you destroy each other, I will destroy you in the end forevermore. And then out comes Booker and Goldberg to set up, you know, that they've got a big main event match tonight in the tag match of Booker and Goldberg versus Macias um, and Vampiro. You know, uh, you know, we're, we're not afraid of you. Seca, you know, I know, you know, yeah, I'll fight with Booker T there in the number contendership shop, but, you know, don't worry. I fought with you for years, for basically a year, Vampiro. Do you think I'm going to take my eye off the ball just because it's dark hitting? I'll try to one contender. When I could beat your ass. You got another thing coming. And, you know, basically Booker, Goldberg says, See, you start remember, you're next, but tonight you're both next. 93, perfectly solid promo, gets a 93. You know, could be a little bit better, but it's good stuff still. And then in our, basically, uh, preview match for the big uh, tag team turmoil uh, gauntlet match at Starcade, it'll, as in a poor match, Cash and Mark Jindrak teamed up to defeat Paul London and Yang in 736 when Cash pinned Yang with a dead level. So again, back and forth, high-flying match, Jindrak acts as the base. Uh, you know, Jack maybe he even has a big, you know, few power moves, but in the end, Cash is able to slip out of a, you know, Yang attempt, hit the dead level, which I think is a sort of a pile driver type thing, and hit get a 65. If it's not, you know, whatever he did. Uh, solid match, Jindrak gets a 61, Cash gets a 66, Yang gets a 55, and Paul London, because he's great, gets a 73. Good stuff. And again, um, you know, this basically builds up to the tag team gauntlet match, where the winner will deserve a, will get a future tag title match. And as before, we have a nice little dive train as Jindrak is on the outside. So out comes, you know, so, you know, Paul Lennon hit, hits that. Then Yang hits one on him. Then Cash hits one on him. And then Jason Jett shows up to hit one of them. Then Blizzard comes out to hit one of them. And everybody, you know, hits big, you know, big old dive train as Jindrak has to take it all. And this gets a 56. Uh, then we go backstage where Damien Noble cuts a backstage promo where basically he says, you know, he's the Cruiserweight Champion. And yes, we've got competitors all over the world trying to take him on and take this belt off of me, but there's nobody in the world who can take this away, away from me, the Redneck Rebel, because I haven't got backup in the form of Eddie Sable, and I've got the best talent in the world. 48 because I actually, uh, you know, gave, uh, you know, I actually uh, rated Sable, but what, what can you do? So building up, you know, again, the big, you know, sort of the two big matches that, like, I haven't done a bunch of build-up on, but it's sort of just, like, selling on the idea is, you know, the, the, the tight team pilot match and the open cruise rate invitation, remember? Like, you know, we got people like, you know, Skipper, Laparka, Sabu, and it'd be other people showing up uh, for the um, event eventually. But so 48, not too bad, considering we're rated Ebony. 
Then we go backstage where basically we see that the women are still arguing, including Angel Fox. You know, Lucky James says she deserves a title shot um, because, you know, she actually pinned Angel Fox. Angel Fox says she pinned Gail Kim right in the middle. You know, she actually got the first pinfall, so she's the number one contender. Gail Kim says, like, you know, actually, I don't think any of you deserve the shot since, you know, I'm the women's champion. I'm the greatest women wrestler in this company, and I should serve who is the number one contender. And out comes, in comes Eric Bischoff and says, okay. We need a big, we get a good women's world title match for starting. So here's what's going to happen. Angel, you got the big pinball victory, so you're in the match regardless. Lexi, you're in the match regardless. That makes it come happy. And right now, what we're going to do is, Kit, Gail, Lexi, you're going to team up against, um, who are, yeah, Cartier and Cole. And if either of them get a pinfall, it comes a four-way. Otherwise, it's a triangle match. Nobody's really happy about that, but Bischoff then walks off, like, you know, because, you know, again, I'm playing with sort of, like, the frazzled, like, leader of this mess of merry people, you know, of this backstage chaos, instead of, like, the heel gimmick, because, like, you know, he still wants his ratings, but he also, like, wants some sort of order, but anyway, it's a 61, so we move forward, and we go backstage, where we have, you know, Palumbo and Chavo doing a promo with uh, Jeremy Warash, where, you know, he says, you know, he, he has lots of respect for fighting horsemen, Chavo's with me, and we're going to prove we belong on the big boys, and he you know, basically, you know, focuses on Flair. Flair, I've already beat you, but beating you at your circuit will be so much sweeter. And then, you know, basically him, you know, then he puts, you know, pats Stacy on the shoulder and says, let's go, as, you know, Chavo, you know, does Chavo things, and we build up this, and this gets a 62. Not too bad, you know, not, not the greatest thing, but not too bad either. And again, that really puts over, you know, the big Flair Plumbo match at Starcade um, that's been sort of building for the last couple months. And then in our uh, Tag Team Wounds match, in a about to have terrible wrestling and non-existent heat. Um, and it didn't include the thing. Okay, well, oh well. Celine Cartier and Jordan Cole defeated Lexi James and Gail Kim in 928 when Celine Cartier pinned Lexi James. So what's supposed to happen here was basically miscommunication between James and, Lex and Kim. So Gail accidentally hits, you know, some sort of like a big springboard move on uh, James that allows Cartier to basically hit, hit some sort of big move on James and get the pinfall victory and join the Starcade match. So that actually, let's go ahead and add that. And it doesn't really matter. Like it won't help the uh, show, but like, you know. So we got Gil Kim, Jordan Cole, I mean, not Jordan Cole, Celine Cartier, Angel Fox, and Lexi James, not Lex Luger, for Starcade for the Women's World title. And 59, perfectly okay match. Uh, Cole gets a 53, Cartier gets a 55, Gilkin gets a 60, and Lexi James gets a 53. And the baby she's celebrating afterwards gets a 57. Good stuff. Then we go backstage, uh, where basically we have Ray Jr., Scott Steiner, and Sean Hare. Basically, you know, Scott Steiner starts by saying, saying, I don't like either of you pitchers, but he's like, Helms and Gigantes more because they've gotten in my way. So I'll team with you tonight, but don't think of me as your friend. Think of me as a weapon to be placed towards two apps two SOBs for me to take out because I'm the big bad booty daddy. It's got O'Hare just sort of stands up and says, don't forget, I beat you, Snyder. So I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of either any of the triumvirate or Helms. So get that in your head. Oh, I remember that you got lucky punk. So don't make me think, don't make me really remember it and, and, and then decide that I want to kick your ass instead of their asses. And Ray Jr. gets in the middle and says, okay, we're partners. We don't have to like each other. Okay, Steiner, you threw me around before in the past. O'Hare, you've got a lot of talent, but you got a temper. But we gotta get the, we gotta do this together, because we gotta take these out, and then after Starcade, whatever can happen. Good stuff. A ninety-six, uh, really good promo. Again, six minutes can really help stuff, and really builds up the the big main event, a big tag match we got going here in a minute. And then in our uh. Tag match, and he battled like great wrestling, good heat, Ric Flair and Shane Douglas defeated Chuck Palumbo and Chavo Guerrero in 907 Rick Flair, it says pinch Palumbo with a handful of tights, but this was Douglas using Flair using Douglas's chain, knocking him out in the middle of the ring, getting the pinfall victory. This gets an 84. Jesus, that was a lot better than I expected, actually. Uh, Douglas gets an 85, Rick Flair gets an 81, Palumbo gets a 64. Uh no, yeah, Chavo Guerrero gets a 64. Chuck Palumbo gets an 82. And yeah, good back and forth tag match, you know. Again, if you're notice, like the, the match links are a little shorter, at least on the undercard, that's because we got a lot of stuff to build up and hype. And but yeah, there we go. Good stuff. And then post match, of course. So what happens basically, you know, Stacey's in the ring to help Palumbo. When, when Rick Flair grabs her, you know, and plants a big old lip lock on her to booze from well, probably actually probably a big spot because it's 
a it's slight sexual assault on women, which is still popular in 2003 in wrestling fans, and it's Ric Flair doing it, so there you go. But still, probably still some booze because they remember Ric Flair as a heel, but he kisses Kate Stacy, and then, you know, struts out. And that's that. That gets a 72. Uh, then we have basically assault. Basically, we have hype for the big assault on an anarchy match at the pay per view, which you know basically puts over. You know, there'll, there'll, there'll be a ladder. You know, a, a super tall ladder, lots of stuff at ringside. You know, tables, singapore canes, barbed wire boards, anything that can cause injury, and of course, a big twenty foot tall ladder with tag titles at the top. And only one team will prove that they're the best tag team in professional wrestling, and that gets a sixty two because it's just basically a short one minute video. Then you move forward to our Canyon Eddie Guerrero contract signing. So, you know, basically we start out with, you know, Eddie, we start with Canyon and says, you know, you know, basically Canyon says, Eddie, you want to talk about being held down? You were born to a wrestling family. You were wrestling Ric Flair within what, like six months of your debut in this company, if not short. You, and you had every Dave, Wade, and Scott, Smart Pop, on the internet sing, singing your praises. Meanwhile, I was forgotten about, sneered at, or just thought of just another waste of space that we said he was overpaying. So I had to scratch, claw, and get my way to the top of this business and prove my, to prove that Nobody's better than Canyon. No, it has been a way that these more fans can appreciate, but I'm proud to be a horseman. And I'm proud to be a world champion. And but I need to prove that I belong, Eddie. And to to prove that I belong in this place that you've proved hell by being born in it. But that's why it's Starcade. I'm gonna prove that nobody's better than Canyon. And when I pin your ass one, two, three, that's what you have to remember. That yes, there's gonna be conspiracies, but in the end. The community's failed because I'll walk out here as world champion once again. Eddie responds, can you say, yeah, I'm part of a wrestling family. But you really think that helped in corporate suits in Atlanta would try and sign me? They think they think they gave two dams about what my uncles and cousins did all over this country for decades. I've had to fight too, and you may not like it, but it's the truth. To fight under a mask in Japan. I dealt with tragedy in Mexico, I say, and I went over in Ace Airs up north. But now I'm here, and yeah, you're a great wrestler. And yes, the horsemen are even great. And, you know, I've done things like them too. But right now, I'm the world champion. That proves I'm the best in the world. And if you think you can easily take that off of me, I say, we got another thing coming. Because Grow Family values are that I need to be at the top of this world. And there's nothing you can do about that. And there's a face-off. They sign their contracts. And, n like, no actual brawl, but, like, a hit intense stare down. And there we go. Continue to build for the huge main event, Eddie versus Keenan for the world title. 97, good stuff. Uh, then, when we come back, we have a Helms and Crown Front post-match, pre-match interview. And, you know, you know Helms, you know, basically kit, start, Storm picks out and says, you know, as the best techno wrestler in World Championship Wrestling, we have to say that Helms is one of the few young wrestlers we actually respect because he took what he wanted instead of waiting for WCW officials to give him a handout. And Helms, like, basically takes the mic and says, yes, don't worry, your superstar has arrived to save you. And... The greatest United States champion of all time is here. Take, take back the title at Starcade, and we'll do a little preview of that right now. And don't worry, Gigantes will wreck the supposed religion of Scott, Scott Siner. Hey, maybe along with your title at Starcade, I'll take your mask too. That cues Ray Jr. to come out, and the match is on. This gets a 69. Nice. And here we go. The actual... Okay, so this actually kind of under... Eh, I don't want to say this underperformed. Because I forget sometimes, like, Storm and Awesome aren't super, super over. But, yeah, maybe this could have been a little better. Let's see here. Let me look at the church heat real quick. Eh. No. Okay. Just poor gimmick, low morale. Okay. I mean, could have been a little bit better. Eh, oh, well. What can you do? Anyway, in a super match, Shane Helms and Team Canada of Storm and Awesome. Didn't even realize I was doing that. Tweeted O'Hare. Scott Siner and Ray Jr. in 1526 when Shane Helms pinned Ray, Maju Ray Jr. with a super kick following interference from, of course, Gigantes. So, again, back and forth match. Breaks down. O'Hare, Steiner gets his big suplex is in. Awesome brawls a little. Uh, Storm is able to, like, you know, out Russell Ray Jr., but gets, like, bowled over by Sean O'Hare. O'Hare uses his power. Almost hits Widowmaker on uh, Storm, but, you know, awesome interferes. Things break down. Gigantes is able to come in, uh, you know, and basically throw Ray Jr. into the uh, pole outside, then roll him in, and that allows Helms to super kick and get the pinball victory over the U.S. champion. Like I said, this gets an 84. Ray Jr. gets an 87. Scott Steiner gets an 83. O'Hare gets an 86. Helms gets an 87. Storm gets a 75. Awesome gets a 76. And then, uh, basically, we have a post-match, like, things breaking down, which gets a 79. As Helms throws the title on Ray Jr. as he tries to get up, Gigantes and Snyder brawl, and O'Hare tries to fight off both Awesome and Storm, but he ends up being the victim of a Storm super kick into an Awesome powerbomb. 
and this gets a 79 as we really build things. And now, yeah, it's main event time. Mesh gets an 87, which, eh. Okay, not enough, not enough selling. Okay, that, that sort of makes sense. As an exceptional match, Booker T and Bill Goldberg, Bill Goldberg drew with Messias and Vampiro in 754, falling to double disqualification. Basically what happens is, uh, you know, the Deadpool get involved, or the Deadpool come down and get involved, but then that brings Jeff Hardy to come out, and it's everything falls into chaos. And of course, did you really think you were going to clean finish in this type of main event? Uh, this gets an 87, Goldberg gets a 92, Booker T gets an 87, Vampiro gets an 83, Messias gets an 87. Uh, just, you know, back huge back and forth brawling, you know, to, to end things. You know, everybody gets their big spots in before the match. You know, Booker T hits the uh, axe kick on Vampiro, but, you know, Messias rolls in, Messias goes for a choke slam, Goldberg gets out of it, Goldberg tries to go for the Jackhammer, but Miss Vampire interferes, and eventually everything just, you know, breaks down. Um, and then, close things out to a 95, Every, you know, everything goes crazy, you know, big old brawl, Goldberg and is fighting, uh, Booker and RVD actually, you know, fighting eventually Vampire, but they eventually hit each other, and there's a standoff that allows Vampire to run in, uh, Jeff Hardy goes after Morningstar, and everything just, you know, as now just really do the final hype job for Starcade, as this gets a 95, and the show overall gets a 90. So really good stuff. And hey, it's Eddie Guerrero. He's good. Um, yeah, good stuff. I mean, really, really good stuff, actually. Like, I think that was a really good, solid, um, you know, go-home show for Starcade as we sort of build up, you know, all the big matches and even a little bit of the smaller matches and really hypes up, you know, what, what, what the lineup is. Um, so we actually out... So we'll check our mail first. Okay, so yeah, right. All these things are expiring. Um, oh, also... I keep on forgetting to announce it as part of the show, but assume it's been doing, um, there's been asked for it. Basically, Nitro is returning to Turner on TBS. No, this isn't just because AEW did it like I did this months ago, because TBS is actually bigger in the game than TNT, so there you go. Um, but yeah, let's first look at what uh, WWF did, uh, not just tonight, because last night they had Armageddon. So, first looking over Armageddon, uh, they had. Do, do, do lots of pre-show matches. So we had Lita defeating Elizabeth Love. Uh, that's Lizzie Valentine, just for those who forget. Terry defeated Cena Majors to retain the women's title. Uh, Saturn defeated Grandmaster Sexy. Benoit and Testa Nubert defeated DDP and the Outcast in a 79. Randy Orton defeated Matt Hardy by countout in a match that had been for the European title in a 75. Scott Hall defeated the Boss Man in an 81. Trish Stratus defeated Molly Holly in a 90. Jesus. Okay. You go, girls. Uh, William Weirgill defeated K Cook by DQ in a match that for the IC title, which got an 82. Uh, Team Angle defeated Bump and Ground, which is again Rikishi and Val Venus for, to retain the tag titles in 83. And then three straight 99s, because of course they did. Triple H defeated Kane by DQ. Kurt Angle defeated The Undertaker. And Brock Lesnar defeated Chris Jericho in a dog collar match to retain the world title, all in 99s. And then they did Raw last night, which got, which got an 89, which is interesting. As we had uh, Dean Lenko winning a squash, DDP came up with Bum and Grind, defeated Kevin Nash in Quick and Sexy, Scott Hall defeating Jake Roberts, Triple H defeating Nick Dinsmore in an 89, Jesus, uh, Rain Orton defeated Raven by DQ in an 81, and Billy Gunn defeating Steven Richards, and in the main event, Steve Austin defeating Chris Benoit, Kane Kurt Angle in a four way 99. So good stuff for them. Um, so yeah, time for a final check in. Oh, and also, real quick, uh, to go over Starcade. So. We had Monty Brown, so we had uh, Bischoff in here to mediate between, uh, you know, the between Ernest Miller and uh, Miss Jones. We had you know, Skipper winning a match over Blitzkrieg. We had Jordan Cole defeating Katarina Waters in a squash. We had Bischoff mediation session, basically set up getting matches at between Ernest Miller and Stevie Bray. And then we had less stat defeating Chavo in the main event. And then at the last Saturday night taping before the pay-per-view, which didn't really like the fight last show, uh, we had uh, Sterling James Keene defeating Scott Taylor. We had a, 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 that should be a Starcade Control Center. I don't know why I put Halloween Havoc. That's dumb. Uh, we had Beth Phoenix and Annie Hart defeating Katarina Waters and Amber O'Neill. Any final hype drop? We had uh, the Roman Legionnaires defeating Three Count and Gang Blue Streak and LaParker and Sabu. And we had Jonathan Toro defeat Fifthly to retain the TV title. So again, as a final sort of, uh, I don't say go home show. But yeah, just to go over things one more time. For our creatives, oh, oops, not creatives, but for storylines, we got uh, Flair for the Old at a 79. We've got Gigante versus Steiner at an 82. We've got the Goldberg, uh, Macias, and Hardy Morningstar treated at an, at a 91. We had Helms Ray Jr. at an 81. We had O'Hare versus the Triumvirate at an 83. We had Road, we have 
Guerrero and Canyon at a 91. We have Tag Wars at a 79. We have Booker T, RVD, and Vampiro at a 91. And Women's Title Showdown is at a 58. And again, final sort of, uh, you know, setup for the pay-per-view, pass. And main event, we've got Eddie Guerrero versus Conan. We've got Bill Goldberg versus Macias. We've got Air Raid versus America's Most Wanted versus Heart Legacy in a Assault on Anarchy match. You've got Chuck Palumbo versus Ric Flair. Jeff Hardy versus Morningstar. Sean O'Hare versus Mike Awesome. Shane Helms versus Ray Jr. for the U.S. title. Vampiro versus Booker versus RVD in an Emerald Contenders match. Scott Snyder versus Gante in a big brawl. We got Gail Kim versus Lynn Cartier versus Angel Fox versus Lexi James for the WCW Women's World title. We've got the Tag Team Terminal match, uh, which will involve teams like Jared and Douglas, Jet in London, uh, Cash and Reno, and other big, you know, teams. Um, we've got the Cruiserweight, you know, Invitational, including Jamie Noble, and any Cruiserweight who wants to challenge for the Cruiserweight title. And, of course, we've got uh, Ernest Miller versus Stevie Ray for control of Saturday Night on the line. So it's a big show. It's a big, huge show. It's Starcade. It's Granddaddy of them all. It'll be live from Chicago. And like I said, on Friday, we'll have a the final sort of... Um, the final, like, you know, our big, you know, pre-show, our big preview, where even if you're watching these videos regularly, you can you know, get all the build-up for the badges. And then next Friday after that will be Starcade. Then, of course, it'll be our year-end review and all fun stuff like that as we move into the year 2004. But that's it for now. So I hope you enjoyed this. Go ahead and give it a like. Comment below on what you're liking and not liking. And subscribe to your channel for lots of more TW2020 content, including this series, my MLW 2005 series, WCW 1993 with no recreation off, and Cornell's Weekends. But that's it for now, so talk to you later, and adios.